final journey. We are just about uh, to start with the final match for the day and the whole Dream Challenge 2018. Oh, an important lag here, and it looks like the Americans might have won it again. Ooh, ooh, mm, ooh. Doesn't no, look no, like no. so to me. Um, well, he didn't take long to look, so I don't know. Well, uh, we've got uh, Shane Van Boning versus Fedor Gorst in the decider as a captain speaks. And uh, it is uh, just um, the same uh, it uh, was last year. It right. was a Shane versus Fedor. Uh, back then, a Shane won five to two. So, ga so guys over there, please don't be surprised that it was not Ruslan picked. Just right. uh, it, it, well. it, it wasn't like this uh, last uh, year. So just no wonder uh, Fedor improved since then, uh, winning his uh, junior world title. Yeah, and uh, it looks like Fedor had his break cue in hand. So Fedor did win the the lag, and and uh, not surprising also because. Ruslan hasn't played a match today, um, so he played three already. He could have he could have been chosen here, but not getting to play on the table. Uh, probably a lot of emotions on the sidelines for Ruslan watching. Uh, so I don't. I'm not surprised with this pick at all. I would have been surprised a little bit if it was somebody besides Fedor, but. Stepanov played very well as far as as long as Andrew, uh, no Andrew as well. Okay, we're gonna see. He's gonna get a one ball to start. Now the two's gonna have problems though. Yeah, that's a monster break, if you ask me. Yeah, well I watched him in Iowa this year play ten ball on the nine on the nine foot table and he played it he broke the balls awfully well from the center of the table. We can see him break from the well, actually, believe it or not, uh, during a recent uh, China Open, uh, Ko Ping Yi uh, witnessed uh, uh, Fedor spanking his younger brother, Ko Ping Chung, and after that, uh, he just uh, made an observation of how good Fedor was breaking, and he approached him and actually told, uh, like, let, let, let Fedor know that uh, Ko Ping Yi himself is going to use uh, his own break, I mean, Fedor's. Right. And uh, th that was just uh, the same Ko Ping Yi uh, said uh, on his interview later after winning the whole event. With yeah. Fedor's break. Well, he's going to shoot this one and come two rails tw towards the towards the two ball. He needs a little love, and that's not it. Yeah, nothing there. Now, he, I would shave the... Yeah, just b brush it on, on the left side. The close side. I would go the other way. I would go the other way and use... Uh, Try just to duck behind the six? Behind the nine. Just shave it with a little bit of spin and just float behind the nine. Makes uh, an easy kick, but n still, you're going to get a little more guaranteed snooker that way. If you go this way, I think you're taking a little more chance. And maybe maybe uh, the angle doesn't appear so, but this is the route I like for sure. Now, you figure Shane to get a kick that he can maybe make cross side, but it's not going to be easy. I think, I think in an opening, you have to take the guaranteed snooker there in the opening rack for sure. Now Shane can do a couple of different kicks here. He can try and get uh, make the two. The one thing about trying to make the two, you're probably not going to get position on the four because you're going to hit it with a low ball. He can try and come across the two, sending the cue ball up table and maybe the two out in space. Uh, so I like him going for the side pocket here, though. Be just because you're so close to it, you can really uh, calculate it pretty well, and you're. Your gut instinct is, is, is there. Well, Shane is looking for some certain spot on the rail. Well, it's another part of his game that a lot of people don't give him credit. He really oh. kicks at the ball very yeah. well. Pointing his finger over there and uh, like... He's not big underdog here. Cross side, maybe? Oh, oh. He's going to give up a little bit of a shot, but not much. Oof. Look at that going by the cue ball twice, two different times, just just barely went by the cue ball. So now Fedor with the four ball there, safety is not easy. He can shoot the two into the four and run the cue ball two rails behind the five. That's the best safety, in my opinion. It's very easy. Just shave the two into the lower side of the four and run the cue ball behind the five. He could go for the cross side bank as well, like this. That's a beautiful shot to open this. 
first track of the match. Yeah, now fairly simple. He's got to pay attention, of course, because the nine does have the six covered up a little bit. And Fedora had a few miss hits early in his match uh, uh, in day three, just uh, maybe an hour and a half ago or so, two hours ago but then cleaned up the match very well at the end. So he doesn't want to get super thin on this six, but obviously doesn't want to get snookered. So he's going to come pretty clean far away from the nine. Oh, he barely actually got by the nine. It actually ended up perfect, but... So he'll just screw the cue ball back past... Oh no, he's just going to play for the upper pocket, okay. Must have been a little too thin to want to draw the ball. Oh, could have uh, laid an easy safety on Shane hadn't he traveled uh, far, far enough, enough with his cue ball. Just behind the nine. Well, once again, we're having a decider here. It's all square, eight to eight. Double heel match. Well, I think Shane was a, not an obvious pick, but the guy you probably are going to pick. And one good reason I liked it, Johan and I talked about it a little bit on the break, is how composed he stayed after trailing in uh, what could have been a deciding win match for Team Russia just not long ago. He trailed two games at one time. Well, looking at Shane, you know, you can never tell uh, whether he is uh, leading or trailing. Well, um, that's one of the reasons I think he's improved, is uh, he just really takes what's given to him and, and, and just does his best on every shot. His opponent gets a little bit of a lucky break against him, he just rolls with it. And this is another reason why he would have been hard not to pick. I think he's really hit the break well today. Lost the cue ball a little bit there in the one. What's the one going to do? The eight. Oh, the eight looked like it was getting in yeah. play. He cut him a little bit, and I'm not sure that was intended. And it looked like the eight was going to come down and cover the cue ball up. Yep, that's exactly what it did. Mm, tough rollout situation here because uh, your opponent can cut the one, so. He's not happy. Yeah, and That's pushing sure. out uh, to the jump uh, wouldn't help much. No. Versus Federer. Well, you can't roll out to an easy jump, and you can't roll out to a jump that you have way the worst of it, so... Oh, he's got to cut it to the side. Uh, I don't think Shane would roll out to a cut in the side. I don't think he would give that up. That's why he rolled out off the rail. I think you're going to see Shane, if he gets it passed back, uh, send the one ball a couple times and maybe across and bring the try and bring the cue ball back down table behind the two eight and nine he's cutting in the corner wow he looking at the corner okay i'm not sure what he's doing Looks like he's playing for the corner, but getting from the two to the three is so tough. So maybe he's just going to play the safety. He figured he can just bury him behind the four six right here. So things starting off uh, nicely for Team Russia. He'll play the two into the back of the seven probably and run the cue ball behind the four. Four and the six. He actually wants the two to get by the seven here, I believe. That makes the kick very tough if it just hits the seven. Yeah, he see how he made sure he got it by? It makes everything very difficult. It's actually good. Shane yeah, we could have wished for like um, getting the cue ball closer to the four ball. Of course, but but he didn't want to bump the four and open open things up a little bit. It was key to get the two past the seven. That way you don't offer an easy one real kick. Now it looks like he's got to use a jump cue. Well, certainly nothing easy over there for Shane. No, and when you have to get over a close one, it's hard to put speed on the ball. So 
meaning it's hard to send the two all the way down table. Oh, wow. He curved it. He must have put a little bit of right English trying to bring the cue ball backwards, and it curved on him. Because he definitely wasn't aiming to try and hit the edge. He was aiming to hit full. And see, so he watched right there. It curved on him. And that wasn't a miss hit. That was just uh, because he wanted to hit the right side of the two and have the cue ball come back towards the eight. Well, safety battle won here for Federer Gorst. Yeah, and that was just uh, stemmed from a little bit of a miss hit on the break, cutting the one a little bit. Well, so the, the eight ball should end up uh, in the side pocket, I believe. Yeah, you would think so. There are two pieces of master chalk used by Shane. Right there on the end rail. Now he'll want to get nice and full on the seven. So just like uh, Michael alluded to, that eight in the side most likely. claps there, but when he's down on the ball, <laughs> there's not much noise in that arena. A little off angle here, so he may go to the rail and out. Because he's the cue ball's falling a little bit downward, I think. Yeah. It was actually that silent when uh, Andrei Serestanla was beaten by Shane uh, Van Boning earlier in the day. But now Federer goes two racks up on Shane. And breaking. And Shane really not uh, doing a whole lot wrong. That was a tough jump shot. But Fedor taking on a really tough one ball after the rollout, knowing that he can't play position to run out. That's, that's a lot of pressure, taking on a shot that you know you have to just play safe on the next ball. But he knows it was the right choice. And that's uh, a lot of experience uh, beyond his years, knowing that if he pockets the one, he gets a, a very uh, jam up safety on the two, burying him behind the four. And just to remind you, he is only 18. All right. Wise beyond his years, right? I think it was uh, Chris Melling once uh, at one of the World Pool Series tournaments uh, when he said in his interview that uh, he'd be surprised Federer Gorst not winning uh, a major title uh, by the age of 25. Well, the way pool is, if you can get going, the confidence in tournaments goes up every match. You play a really good match, you get better and better usually. So 25, I think, is a long time away. I think you will see that maybe 20. Well, you can see he's got all the tools. Well, it just shows how many years, uh, hopefully, Federer has got in this game. Absolutely. All right, the one is going to come up enough. The cue ball is going to get kissed a little bit, but he's going to get a nice shot. Now, he's got to play a little bit of a position on the two, but you can see the three goes pretty handy in the side pocket. So right now, everything rolling nice. No bad kisses on the cue ball. Nothing really tied up. A little bit of congestion, but everything goes. The three goes in the upper corner as well as the side. So this is all about having enough speed. So I wouldn't doubt if he catches the bottom rail here. That way he guarantees he gets all the way down for the two. Just go forward. Yeah. Only a little bit. Yep. That, see that second rail right here? That's that reference to make sure you get to where you want. 
Now he got a little straight, so he may have to shoot the two from a little, the three from a little further away than he wants. But that's okay. Yeah, given the position of the five. Yeah, and it looks like he can actually draw back underneath if he wants where he's at. He's going to punch it out one round. He's going to just slam it out just a little bit. Got a little elevated over the nine, but shouldn't be a problem. Well, the defense, uh, the winner's break now for Shane. I mean, chasing this. Uh, what do uh, you speak, mean? Speaking about format. Oh, oh, uh, wow. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember you prefer <laughs> alternate break. Well, I just like, uh, you know, equal opportunity, and I look at other sports, uh, how successful they are. Um, you know, if they played winter break, the Patriots with Tom Brady, they really might win every Super Bowl. Man, <laughs> they score first. Might be hard to get the ball back. But if the pockets are tight enough, I don't mind winter break. And if the break is uh, tough enough as well. Well, but tonight uh, Shane is going to get back for the next break yeah, of he, the match. He's obviously got to do some damage with that or else uh, you're looking at uh, maybe an unsurmountable deficit. Fedor Gorst is already past the point uh, as compared to last year. He scored three. Shane is on Zilch so far. And he's got to hit the break a little bit better than the last. I don't think it was an intended cut break, that's for sure. I wonder whether Shane is going to study the wreck after the oh, ball. I believe are so. I believe so. Maybe not. Would it mean anything to you whether he does study the wreck or not? Um, not too much. I mean, he's for the most part hit the hit the break really well from that one side. I mean, uh, can't do anything about the wreck, right? Uh, so just uh, like you said, uh, don't uh, pay too much attention to all these gaps, just uh, yeah. drive the cue ball in and see what happens. That's right, that's right. And then, you know, what I like is you get really tuned in from one side. So, which is one thing I might change in the game where you have to break from one side and then the other side. So it's not so easy sometimes, kind of like tennis serving. Okay, I didn't hear anything. Okay, he got one down, but is the seven ball going to get in the way? And it appears so. And there was a helpful bunch uh, from the eight ball, I believe, on the cue ball, which was drifting towards the corner pocket. Right. But it got kissed initially also. Watch. Boom. Yeah, that's for sure. Yep. But here we go. Yeah, I think he only has a piece of the one. I'm not sure he has any of it. Oh, I don't, I don't know. So this is really touchy on a slick table because he's got to chip it. And he's got to go kind of between the nine and two uh, with the cue ball. But you can see the pocket, the pocket is right there. So he's got to get the one up a little high to where maybe he can use the eight. Is he curving this? Oh, he's got to push out. Well, if he's got to push out, we know what that means. He's got the worst of it. I might push out near the three maybe. Somewhere like that, I don't know. Unless he's gonna push out to a kick shot. He's gonna push out to a kick. 
I think. You can't push out to like where you can see the entire ball, I don't think at all. Yeah, push out to a well, kick. Well, I think uh, usually the whole idea behind the push out is uh, not uh, giving your opponent uh, too much of a ball to see. No, for sure, but you can't. You have to push out to where it's doable for yourself as well. And Shane's got a lot in his arsenal when it comes to really creative shots. He could go at the three. The three's over the pocket. And just uh, to come up with a puzzle uh, your opponent hopefully won't solve or recognize. Yeah, well, he's going to kick the one and either slide the cue ball down table or maybe play the one in between the eight and nine down table. But Fedor knows if there's something pretty nice as far as this kick shot, uh, he's not going to pass it. Oh, he can see a piece of it, I think. He's going to knock the one down table. If he can see an edge of this, he can get it behind the 6-4, I think. Yeah, like so. So is it going to get right in the gap? Mm, doesn't look like that no. to me. And okay, Shane's not too discouraged, it doesn't seem like. The one rail kick? No, he can see part of this, whether it be oh, a safety really? or make it. He's You're holding him behind the six. Watch this. You ask Paton, Jeremy. No, that's too hard. Or it's got to go even more. Got to go even more. So we're going to see Fedor's jump cue, that's for sure. And he's only got a sliver to go over, I believe. Be amazing if Shane could see the one on that gap. And now, in return, ironically, Fedor could see the one also. It happens. You know, that's why we have those round objects. Crazy stuff happens. Position isn't easy here, but you figure him to get maybe in between the eight and four if he makes this uh, for, for a cut on the two. Oh, he's only got to go over a sliver, so. Oh, you know, with Gorst, uh, you are to get uh, prepared for this one. Like, he shoots the jump shots as if the, the obstacle is not even there. Right. And that, you could see, he could really power into it because he only had to go over a sliver of the four. So it's all about the natural cut on the two and making sure the white ball doesn't d disappear because the three's over the side. Ooh, and that's what I was gonna say. It's usually a thick miss there and now look. Well, that's a fortunate one. Wow, and the kick is super tough too because the eight's in the way. So now he's gonna have to bend the cue ball. Normally on the slick table, you miss that thickly because you try to put a little bit of left English and the swerve of the cue ball goes a little thick into the ball. So, oh, he can see it. So he's just gonna coast this behind the 6-4. He's gonna have a deft touch though. My cue ball's gotta slow down. So we saw a two ball to open this match uh, that Fedor banked in. And I think he's almost, he doesn't have a free bank, but if he can spin this cue ball below the nine, he can use the 6-4 for a snooker as well. What about going towards the 7 with the cue ball and just driving the 2 past the 4 and 6? That's okay. I don't know. I think I would have to attack on this bank. I mean, this is one you grow up playing. This is what he is doing, actually. It's short. It's short. But he and went behind the 6-4. Does he get a roll? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He missed the 2 ball a second ago and got a little bit of a roll. And now catching the point. But actually, actually catching the point instead of hitting the rail fully actually hurt Fedor because I think he gave up a rail first. I think he gave up a rail first on the two. It's not easy. Well, Shane is a very good uh, these kind of oh, yeah. shot like yeah. going rail first. Yeah, and, and good thing the three's over the pocket so he can simplify this. Great shot. Great shot. <laughs> And he's gotten a little funny here. Like, can he hold the ball for the four? Because going forward with the nine there, it's kind of touchy. So he's elevating to, to really hold the four, hold the cue ball for the four, I think. Or go, no, he's going around. Don't catch anything. Nice shot. Didn't go too far. No, no, no. He made sure he went plenty wide. He may have to play the six up long. 
he doesn't like the angle, he may just float this in and play the six up long. And that's what you have to realize about this table. The pockets are kind of generous at times. So don't be afraid to shoot uh, the longer shot up the table to make the, the run out a little more simple. So he'll just go to the side rail right. Oh, he floated it. And he overcut it quite uh -huh. a bit. Yeah, but it was pocket speed. Okay, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see if he can get out here and maybe the tides turn a bit because... Quite honestly, Fedor made a couple mistakes here. He missed uh, a two ball that was very cuttable. Yeah, speaking of a last wreck, yeah. apparently. And then he missed a cross side bank on the two ball as well. And then Shane came with a nice rail first. So we'll see what the pool gods, uh, how they respond for Fedor. Get on the board here in the case match. Fedor still in a great position, winning the lag and up three to one. Yeah, and it is him uh, breaking in the red next wreck. Yeah, and he's made the one ball track on a on a nice line as far as trying to get a shot. I'd be really surprised if Fedor changed his break spot. Really impressed with SVB though as his uh, this Taking a little bit of the worst of it, having to roll out twice, uh, knowing he's in a bad position and just waiting for his opportunity. Well, I don't think uh, Shane got oh, an yeah. open shot in the first th three wrecks, actually. Yeah, well, he is changing his break spot, and that's surprising. So there must be something in the rack he surveyed that, that he likes. Breaking. I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. Oh, the one ball. And now a pretty doable two ball as well. Sounded like he cut him. It didn't sound like a very flush hit on the one. Well, we didn't happen to see that. Sorry about this one, guys. But a pretty simple shot as far as coming across the table and just taking a little distance on the three for the corner. Oh, is he drawing this out two rails? Wow. I think he's taking a little bit of a chance doing it. Yeah, I thought that was a big chance. He should have come one rail right there and taken the distance on the three. The ball draws very easily. So well, really yeah. gambled with that corner pocket on yeah, this one. Yeah, I was very surprised with that decision. If he catches that point and slows, it could have killed right there or even scratched. He's made a couple of these today, though. These, these uh, very steep angles with the side pocket there. So he's got to be concerned about the speed, too. He can't come all the way across the table. You'll notice the 8 and 9 there. So he's got to kind of float it. I don't think he'll go two rails back and forth. I don't think that's the shot. Oh, that's thick. That's thick. Yep, that's thick. And that was a missable ball. That that was from the decision on the two. Oh, we've just seen uh, Shane played like in the same fashion, but at pocket speed and the ball dropped. Yeah, but that, was, that was a little different, though, I think. Look how deep uh, in the pocket. Uh, That's the a three diamond is, table. Um, and in the past, I think uh, the pocket shelves were even longer. Yeah. Even deeper, I mean. Deeper, yeah. 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 All right, he's going to play a real light rail first here. He wants to come up some, though. He doesn't want to get too thin on the four. So, a big turn of events here, and I'm. Again, very shocked that he didn't just take a little bit easier route on the two ball, just taking one rail across maybe two or three inches behind the head string, taking a little distance on the three. Well, and really, 
after making a mistake in game four, Fedor, he uh, really broke the balls, and uh, the ball's actually dressed up pretty nice, so surprising error. He's going to drag this in a little bit. Oh, he just rolled it. It'll just come straight down the table, straight towards the seven, because the eight will pass as soon as the seven is gone. Yeah, it derails around. Yeah, exactly. has a natural shape. Everything natural here. Just once again, uh, keep a good angle on the eight. You don't want to run into the nine, play in that one. No, the main thing is stay off the rail and don't get too steep on the eight. Exactly. Yeah. And there again, that left, that English didn't check the cue ball quite as much, so he got a hair thinner than probably ideal, but shouldn't shouldn't be a problem. Back on serve, Michael. Shane has the break here in game six, trailing three to two. Yes, only one point down. Just reflecting on something, Shane. Oh, big tension in this room right now. Also play uh, using a glove. I do now for the last like uh, almost a year. Mm -hmm. And I played uh, with a few hundred pounds of powder because <laughs> I have sweaty hands the last thirty oh. years. But uh, switched. Look, Shane, switching changing. To, yeah, changing the position for the cue ball. Let's look at the nine ball. Results. Nine ball, tied up now. Wow, that's two nines for Shane Van Boning today, and and we get no applause there except for a few claps from the Americans. Just trickled in the hole. So now a lot of heat on Fedor. Not saying he's not used to it. He plays professional pool now all around the world. Team USA looks like uh, more cheered up. Yeah, back from the dead, you may say. before to a few of the guys uh, uh, that we might as well go ahead and make it 4-4. I think it's probably going to go there. Well, let's hope so. Might as, well go take it, might as well take it as far as we can take it, Michael. I'm kind We're of, here already. I'm kind of happy in case of a uh, last track. It's going to be Feather breaking other right, than Shane. Right. Talking about that too, uh, I've seen so many times in big situations that, okay, the one's gonna get on the side rail, so unless he wants to bank it or cut it all the way down, it's not gonna be an offensive play. You can see the, the bank is covered up. So, but a lot of times, Hill Hill, we see a rollout situation. It's amazing how often it comes up, so. Certainly unhappy with uh, the cue ball position on this yeah. break, Feather he, is. He's going to float him right behind the three. I wouldn't try to go all the way to the eight. I would just use your talent coming right behind the three, floating the, the one ball just in between, one rail in between the two, four. I think that's okay. Oh, he's going to try and come off and go down. The problem with that is if he doesn't get the snooker, 
you have a lot of opportunity to be uh, to be snookered back. So he's got to get the snooker here. Is he going to catch that ball? Oh, he let him see it. And that's the problem. Now he can be behind the eight. See, that's the problem. When you have those balls lingering over here by that corner on a professional level, you really have to get the snooker. It can't be just distance. You, you don't fancy being aggressive here. Well, I'm not saying, uh, but the cue ball is going out, I think, in one row into the three. So I think you'll see Shane put him behind the eight. You can put the one up on the side rail. You have the three also maybe as a blocker. I don't think he's snookered, right? He's not snookered. No, he's not. No, no, He's no, just no. studying all the options, I think. Yeah, I think he's got to put him behind the eight here. I mean, you can try to cut this in, and you may run in between the three eight, but I think the prudent play is definitely laying the one on the side rail and floating right up behind the eight. It could be a devastating hook as well, meaning the three could cut off the kick and the seven could as well. Oh, he's cutting at it. Wow. Now, is he going to get a roll? Is he going to get a roll? Now he got another tough shot. Wow. But here, he, I think uh, he can hold the cue ball. Well, he's got a dead roll it, though, from distance. Not like something you near, look to do, right? Near the center of the table or the side pocket, probably. He may use something to slow the cue ball down. He may go back and forth. He obviously doesn't mind shooting from distance. Wow. You think this guy isn't prepared? You think this guy isn't prepared? Now, again, he may roll forward for an easy four up in the corner rather than drawing his cue ball. We'll see. He likes drawing it. Yeah, but he plays a smart play a lot. I mean, it's like right there, he just took the cut. That's fine. Always looks That's that guarantee we talked about. Yeah, always looks steeper from the top uh, overhead view. Yeah, so he'll go back and forth, trying to stay right about the spot area, a little bit right of where he's at now. Okay, he went further than I thought he would, but still, it's it's fine. I'm really surprised if Fedor played the safety like that. I thought he would send the one down table and play the cue ball behind the three, resting it on the rail. But it's much easier from over here than it is out of out playing. So he got a little bit off angle here, so he may have to punch this a little bit to come out from the side. I'm not so sure he can just hit it with a top English. He may have to go to well, the rail the, with the, a little power. The corner is there also. I know, but I think he wants to play the side. See how he had yep. to address it with more speed, right? Made it much easier now. Yeah. Well, and uh, how is about that from Shane being uh, three re three wrecks down? How about the shot on the no, one and two no, right nice there? Nice response. And now he's put himself in position. The only position you can ask for, especially after losing the lag, is having a break to win it. Just now I want to beg the nine ball to stay on the table. Right. To prolong our pleasure. Well, you know, if he breaks and runs out, you know, I understand that. I mean, I'm pulling for U.S. however it happens. Though. No, no, when he golden breaks. Yeah, he's already had two today. Uh, let him pull all the way down yeah, to the but end. Yeah, but it was pretty impressive to attack on that one ball, I thought. Uh, where there was a safety there, very available, and knowing that he wasn't guaranteed position. Ooh, is that that nine ball you were talking about? Now, if the one gets up, if the one gets up, he's going to be aggressive. He's going. He's cutting at this, I believe. I think, anyways, it's a little steep, of course, but 
Well, we... fortunately for Team Russia, there is no any combination on the nine. No, but he can go straight up and down the table yeah, in between the two fives. To finish so. it straight away. Yeah, and you know, uh, he's seeing the edge of the ball very well. That's obvious. I don't think he's going to play safe. I mean, he could kick behind it, send it up table, but I think he's got to take his chance to win right now. He'll definitely take his extension, I'm sure. Is he looking at doing something different than cutting the one? I don't think so. This is just uh, top inside English. A little bit of left, not a lot. It's thin enough to where the cue ball should go up and down. out for the five he's oh, all right yeah it's perfect speed perfect speed wow this is the shot michael yeah whatever happens here we're going to have the awards ceremony right away after mm. this match ends you just got to screw the cue ball back it's all about making the two wow he punched it and he didn't get there i'm surprised he didn't wow surprised he didn't draw it do you think uh, the three is still makeable? No, not at all. And it's a very difficult safety. I'm not sure what he's going to do here. This is that corner hook shot. This is the corner hook shot. The one we just went out and practiced. Oh, he's cutting it. He's cut. He's spinning it. But the cue ball is going to go mad. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, he's okay. But it was the corner hook shot. It was laying nice. <laughs> Twice in one day. You might not see well, that probably shot. Probably you got to show Shane this shot. This no, I bet shot. he knows it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now he's got a little more work from the 6 to the 8. So he's going to want to have angle here, of course. And the, the deal is now he's got to threaten either going three rails with the cue ball top inside shooting the six to the eight or he's got to zigzag the cue ball back and forth so it's kind of what you're comfortable with what you prefer both are both are available on this table myself i like the zigzag shot myself top inside the cue ball deflects a little bit you could overcut the six very easily now shane is you know top three or four in the world at the top inside though that's one thing about him that's what he's shooting, I believe. Going low on the cue ball. Yeah, but it's like that downward. Yeah. Downward again, strike. Downward it. motion. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It makes the ball grab just ever so slightly better, and the spin is tighter, meaning there's less deflection. So here we are, only two balls on the table. That's for the trophy. And he won't. He won't go back and forth uh, three rails. He'll just float this in. Wow. And really that two ball at three nothing for Fedora is what you might say cost him. Well, and now uh, here we have it. Uh, this is uh, five straight wrecks for Shane Van Boney and four straight wins for Team USA to uh, take the USA. trophy uh, once again.